Hello everyone, I'm Michael Sean Gallagher. I am a facilitator for the week three session on mobiles for development and for D uh, for the Moby MOOC 2012 course. It's an open course on mobile learning and I am doing a brief introduction here for Frontline SMS which is a tool used by many in uh, the M4D field, a subset of ICT for D. Um, so I just want to give a brief introduction. Please note that this is specifically for the course of MobyMOOC. For those who are familiar with Frontline SMS, this will be redundant. This will be very simple. Uh, it's just a straightforward introduction to show what the tool is, how it's being used, and some additional resources that might help you get started with it. Uh, generally speaking, the best uh, resources for the use of Frontline SMS are from the Frontline SMS site itself. This is just a cobbling together of some different resources that people have put together to explain exactly what Frontline SMS actually is. But once again, let me stress, this is for the Moby MOOC 2012 course, which is or has run from September 8th to September 29th, 2012. So if you're coming to this after the fact, uh, it might, you know, it might be a little redundant in a, in a way. So what is it? What is the tool we're talking about here? Frontline SMS is a free open source tool used to network existing technology, which is basically, in this case, the SMS enabled mobile phone, this ubiquitous phone found throughout the world, uh, specifically in developing nations. Now, you know, I've talked before in some other presentations about how uh, I see it uh, expanding that concept of developing to include uh, developing pockets of developed nations. I think the distinctions break down on a local level, but for the time being, we should probably focus on developing nations because that's most, mostly where this tool is being used. Um, from the site itself, it says it enables instantaneous two-way communication on a large scale. And you can see the link there. So click, feel free to click that, download it. You could even try to install it yourself if you wanted to. Uh, but for the time being, what do you need? So if, if I were to decide to use this tool for development purposes, whether uh, I'm on the ground in a developing nation or I'm trying to run a project from a distance, which I don't you know, generally recommend, but if you know, sometimes you're not on site, that's, that's to be expected. Uh, here's what you need. You need a basically Frontline SMS is an a application that uses a laptop more or less as a server, a centralized server for a mobile network. So all you need is a laptop, you need a modem, you need some existing SMS plan, so it charges uh, fees just like a regular SMS text message would, uh, would charge, it's the same thing, and uh, a mobile phone. Now these don't have to be smartphones, generally they're not smartphones. Uh, um, smartphone penetration in most developing nations is minuscule, uh, so most people are using your standard cheap uh, mobile phone that uses strictly text uh, SMS uh, technology. So this is what you need to get started and of course the the software itself. What can it do? Okay so essentially it acts, uh, the laptop will act as a centralized server. It networks any number of uh, SMS enabled phones so you can you can network a large community and you can uh, broadcast messages, you can broadcast all kinds of different things and it allows for two-way communication. So essentially you can talk to your audience, your audience can talk to you or with each other. So uh, some different uses of this are survey entries, you can see here from the, from the slide, Comp uh, competition entries, uh, recording field data, which is a very big one, group alerts, field communications, emergency alerts, also a huge one as well, all types of things you can do. So the information comes in and it goes out, all of it's stored locally on the server, which is essentially the whatever laptop you decide to use. And so here's some different ways in it's being used. And it has uh, some pretty ingenious applications throughout the developing world. Some of those are, for example, uh, community banks such as this. You can see uh, Frontline SMS can be hooked up uh, to, to allow for uh, money transfers, uh, centralized storage of money. Uh, the server acts as the centralized, uh, uh, well, the laptop, I should say, acts as the centralized server. So it allows you to communicate with all number of customers, et cetera, et cetera. So you can run community banks, sort of a grassroots approach to banking, uh, which is possible as well with Frontline SMS. Uh, another system, and it's called Frontline SMS Credit, which on some, 
which I mean, is similar. I don't know if you've ever heard of M-Pesa, which is another mobile money solution that is very popular in East Africa specifically. Um, this is similar in that respect. This allows for uh, you can send money, you can remit, so you can send money to relatives and friends, use money at the point of sale, or you can extend mobile money services. So it takes M-Pesa and sort of extends that a little bit further, but it allows for using a very, very simple phone and uh, the laptop as the server, it allows for money to change hands, okay, without, you know, uh, forcing the individual to go to the bank physically, which is a, which, you know, which thwarts a lot of these efforts, uh, because sometimes the banks are, uh, you know, far away, they're distant, so they're not accessible, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, essentially, it allows for people to transfer money to one another just via the very simple SMS phone. That's another example that's being used. Uh, one of the bigger examples is M Health, the M Health initiatives that we see. And if you're interested in this approach, and in fact, one of the live presentations we have this week uh, from Malawi is is dealing with an M Health initiative using Frontline SMS. Uh, I do recommend you jump over to uh, Malcolm's class. He's doing a whole section uh, this week on M Health. Maybe you can poke into both, and and you'll find that interesting as well. So, but in some cases for frontline SMS, what it allows you to do, uh, you have a distributed community. Uh, for example, uh, some live out uh, you know far away from population centers. Some very few have access to you know uh, to medical services on a face-to-face -face level. So what you can do. Uh, you can use frontline SMS to push out status updates, drug information, keep people on schedule in terms of taking their medication, treatment supports, referrals, mobilization, etc. So you can actually send um, individuals can can text their symptoms, they can text their their situation. Uh, doctors or medical professionals at a centralized location can direct them uh, into uh, referrals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's there's not much you can't do with this. Uh, especially mobilizing a very limited pool of resources, so it spreads it spreads it out quite well, and it's just simply a communication network here. Another example, and this is one of the first. Uh, I don't want to know if it's the first per se, but this is one of the more famous examples. Uh, it's M Hel uh, I'm sorry, M Agriculture or M Farming. Sometimes it's referred to, and it's essentially using frontline SMS to uh, network farmers. Uh, so they know. So it, it sends them text messages, uh, any number of things. For example, uh, it could tell them the prices for certain goods at certain markets. So you go to this market, you're going to get a higher price for your goods than another market. Uh, it also says uh, what the going rate for the prices across the board. It helps to so, so make this predictable and, and, and a little bit more efficient. Uh, you can send weather announcements. You can send uh, emergency alerts. Uh, you can request, you know, certain farmers to grow certain crops, et cetera, et cetera. So it networks a, a farming community uh, with technology, which is something unique in and of itself. I mean, it's not not the most common thing in the world, and yet it's this is working. These are proving to be relatively robust networks held together, quite simply, by only a laptop and a bunch of SMS phones, and that's quite a, that's basically it. So it allows you to communicate with your audiences in this way. Uh, another way it's being used, and uh, the discussion uh, in the live session from Malawi, uh, we'll touch on this a bit, uh, frontline SMS radio. So you can uh, allow for this two-way communication with your radio shows. Radio is still a highly, highly relevant technology in developing nations and in many parts of developed nations, too. So uh, this allows for a two-way communication, sort of almost like a call-in kind of service, uh, through text, through uh, through SMS. So. The, the radio serves as a wonderful broadcasting tool, and this allows for the audience to sort of speak back in some ways, too. And this could be on any number of issues. It could be health issues. It could be emergency issues. It could be education uh, initiatives, etc. So there's some examples, and there's some evidence of it being used for other things as well. Uh, and, and this is starting, this is more of a developing thing. So this is starting to be seen now. For example, it can, it's used for language learning, and you can imagine a broadcasting tool that shoots out ex any number of vocabulary quizzes or uh, you know language exercises or activities uh, to students on any given basis and the students can text back their results or or at the very least just use to practice on any given uh, any given subject any given time educational mentoring you can have you can set up mentoring networks where a centralized mentor who happens who wouldn't be living 
in that locale can can communicate with their students and check on them and see how their progress is going with particular subjects. Uh, maybe they're struggling with math, for example, so you can have a two-way communication there. Uh, political empowerment, you allow people to say, um, you know, they're allowed to voice their opinions on these matters. Uh, more importantly, it mobilizes voters to go to a particular poll or district or uh, to mobilize, you know, mobilize communities to 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 voice their their opinions. Um, mobilization, like I said, and this is what we're talking about, essentially the mobilization toward resource allocation. So if you have X number of doctors in an entire country, you want to spread those out in the most efficient way possible. If you have X number of teachers, it's much the same way. You want to make sure everybody is accounted for and there is some base level of accessibility for basic services. Uh, and Frontline SMS goes a long way to helping that happen. And essentially what it is is just a communication network just a two-way communication network, which seems simple to us, but it's being used in very, very ingenious ways. So there's some resources here in case you're interested in getting more. Frontline SMS can be downloaded at the site itself. There's uh, a whole plethora of getting started guides and tutorials and videos. There's a highly passionate community interacting at any given moment with Frontline SMS. So they exchange best practices and ideas. And there are uh, many, many use cases there that should inspire you to Think about how tools like this, these very simple tools that are allowing, you know, irregardless of what type of phone you have, you're allowing you to communicate with everybody via shared network, just via text, uh, and how this, these, uh, these tools can be used in your own communities. And now uh, it could be, like I said, it could be developing pockets of developed nations, uh, poor communities, uh, uh, et cetera. So there's many, many applications that haven't been explored yet. So next steps, uh, if you are in the Moby MOOC course uh, and you are participating, I might ask the next thing to do is to, after you've watched this video, is go to the discussion board and post responses to frontline SMS prompts. I've put a few prompts there that hopefully will get you thinking. Uh, I'd like you to go ahead and uh, post some responses there. If you have your own questions, your own, you, you've come up with a, a different application or you just want to learn some more about it, post those questions too. Uh, there are many people there who will be willing to help you out. Uh, also, sign up for the synchronous sessions. Uh, right now, I have listed two sessions here. One's still up in the air, but the Malawi one is definite. Uh, you can sign up for those, and I'd like to see you there. Uh, that presentation will be recorded and made available uh, on the Moby MOOC site itself, and I'll post that later. And I should little a little note there saying this is valid only until September 27, 2012. So if you're watching this video after the fact, I apologize for that. Uh, and so thank you. I'm um, once again Michael Sean Gallagher. I'm at the Institute of Education at the University of London. There's my website and I hope to see you on the discussion boards for Moby MOOC.